Hello everyone, it's Chris. Um, no Carradine today, it's just me today because I'm just talking about video games and nothing but video games, specifically God of War. Um, this is something that I've been thinking about doing for a long time. Um, I finally have the energy and the mental capacity to do it. Um, so basically what my plan is to talk about uh, just the games that I beat throughout the year. I want to record some gameplay. Um, stitch it together with my opinions. Uh, maybe the games and stuff segment from uh, the podcast and just throw them up on Patreon. Maybe eventually put them out on YouTube. Um, these are not going to be high quality. These are not going to be super well done. Um, I don't have a script written out for them. I just have an outline of what I want to touch on. Um, they might be, I don't know, maybe two minutes long. But this one's definitely not going to be because we're already at a minute. Um, they might be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. Um, I just want to uh, eventually get to the point where I can do these videos in a way that they rival those of famous YouTubers, but I don't really care if I become a famous YouTuber because these are just going on Patreon unless I put them out on YouTube. Um, so last year I beat around 56 games. Um, 56 is a lot of games and i noticed that i could have recorded gameplay for about 40 of them and i already gave them scores i had opinions on them all i had to do was just talk about them and put them down on paper or something right um that's all i had to do which i didn't do um but now being that i want to keep a better track of these games and stuff and just log them for myself just to be like oh what did i think about that and go listen or watch or whatever um i think this would be a good idea to do that and um i might convince garden to do it but we would have to draw everything in her books and that would be a nightmare so i don't think that's gonna happen but we'll see we'll see if we can get something done with her for her uh book talk so uh, let's go ahead and get started on some God of War, shall we? Hmm? Hmm? Shall we? We shall? Yes? Let's do it. Let's start off by appreciating the main screen. You can see Kratos standing over here looking all badass and scary and shit, but inside we really all know that deep down he's just a teddy bear. A teddy bear that wants to rip off everyone's faces and in half and gut them and kill the gods and Ares! Anyways, uh, Let's talk a little bit about my story with uh, God of War. So I don't really remember when the first time I played God of War was. I don't even remember if there even was a first time or if this is something that I've been playing forever, just like Resident Evil 4 and all those games that came out that amazing year in gaming. Um, but uh, I remember playing this game at my buddy Jorge's house. Um, we would play for a long time and he would get so annoyed because he was tired of the game. He just wanted to play something else like Metal Gear. Uh, we played a lot of single player games back then. I don't know why. And we just had the time of our lives doing it. Um, but God of War, um, I remember the first time. Well, I don't really remember the first time. I do remember vividly uh, the sound his chains make, which you can hear throughout the video because I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm killing a bunch of monsters right now. I, I'm not seeing um, the actual gameplay right now. I'm just talking into the microphone, into, into uh, audacity. But yeah, I remember playing it. This was one of those games where I played before I bought a PlayStation 2. So most of the memories that I have of it were from playing it at friend's house instead of uh, playing it in my own. Um, once I did get a PlayStation 2, I remember getting God of War. Uh, Devil May Cry, and I think I also got got uh, God of War 2, but I'm not sure if that released anytime near it or not, or if I bought that eventually at one of during one of my birthdays. Um, but uh, I do remember playing God of War a lot. I do remember enjoying it a whole hell of a lot, uh, way more than I enjoyed it this time. But we'll get into that later. Um, the game. You know, it, it, it did something that I had never seen before. You know, we had seen uh, weapons and swords and shit and Zelda and like Castlevania and all that stuff, but we had never seen up to this point uh, swords being attached to chains and being flung around and feeling the weight of those chains with swords just hitting enemies and ripping them to shreds. It was a completely brand new feeling unlike anything else I had seen up to this point. And 
I loved every second of it. It was great. It was it was very very fun. Uh, it, it it did so many new things, like quick time events. I had never seen quick time events up until this point. And yeah, I know that after this game, they became incredibly uh, overabundant in other games because uh, apparently game developers saw it and they were like, oh people like pressing buttons in between of a cutscene so they don't pay attention to the cutscene they just want to press the buttons uh no it only worked in god of war because the buttons were put off to the side and you would press them get a lot of cutscene and then you would have to press another one get a lot of cutscene and so on and so forth until the whole cutscene was done and that was great that was cool as fuck and the thing is that that didn't happen during game uh story moments it happened during gameplay moments so let's say a boss fight or a fucking normal encounter like with the cyclops you would find one and just beat the shit out of it until you actually managed to kill it now that that just resonated with so many people like this game was just so popular for some reason and at least in puerto rico where i grew up it wasn't so much uh that much popular because back then uh most people were really into the need for speed racing games which i get it they're fun but god damn it branch out play something else um eventually that whole craze would repeat itself uh, during the ps3 era and ps4 era with the call of duty so everybody would just buy fucking call of duty every single year and they were these amazing games um, that I remember being at GameStop and people were like, oh, that game looks incredible. What console is it coming for? And, peop and, and the workers would be like, oh, it's coming for PS3 or, or Xbox or whatever. And like, oh, I'm going to buy that. And when that game came around, guess who wasn't buying it? The idiot that was playing Call of Duty. And that's fine. Like, if you like Call of Duty, that's fine. But you should hold Activision accountable for more s to, to be better, you know, as a company as, and as a developer, because they were not. So let's talk a little bit about the graphics. Um, the graphics in this game, they are dated as fuck. Um, there's a lot of things in this game that are dated as shit. Um, I, I am a little bit surprised that the cutscenes still do hold up pretty well. I really do like the way that they look. Even playing them on the Vita, the cutscenes were very compressed. Um, and they still looked and sounded amazing. Uh, the gameplay itself, uh, you can count the polygons on Kratos. He does not look great and the enemies look even worse um, especially those zombies you fight at the beginning of the game they look pretty bad um, I'm actually surprised that the Hydra does look very very good I, I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to see the Hydra um, I will maybe add some extra audio at the end of the video if I do get to the Hydra or if I'm close enough that I know that I can get to the Hydra um, so that you guys can see exactly what it looks like and that just fighting that hydra such a fun boss fight like I, I wish they would have done more boss fights in this game like this but we'll get to that part later um so yeah like and, and like the vistas themselves like seeing the scale of things like how massive this uh ancient greek world is the valleys the fucking cities everything is just massive in size and kratos just looks so tiny in compared to the scope of everything else and even Ares the moments where you see Ares stomping around Athens that he just looks intimidating and formidable um, even at the end of the game where you do fight Ares um, there is this uh, you're both giants right uh, we'll get to the story later on but you're both giants and you can see in the surrounding area like in the bridges and stuff you can see very tiny people just run around and it just it, the game just handles scope so well even though the graphics are not as amazing as they should look um, the music like i said is fantastic it is epic it is uh very uh reminiscent of those terrible 300 movies they're so bad and so good at the same time um so you have like very fluty stuff um some strings it just feels like greek uh epic ness stuff yeah um so there's really not much to talk about the music in terms of um variety because it all kind of sounds the same and the theme song is a banger though uh, but the rest of it is just it kind of melts within all the other stuff it just feels like it belongs there's no song by itself that stands out to me it's just all flowing into each other and it's great i, I don't complain about that because i do enjoy it it does bring the world to life and i do appreciate that 
Um, I, I didn't write that I wanted to talk about the actual um, combat uh, sounds, but the combat sounds are great. Like I said earlier, the chains with the swords just attached to Kratos and just hearing that <laughs> while the sword, swords are being thrown around and smacking the, the fucking enemies and just hearing them like doom and gush and shit. It's just so much fun. It's so, so... It, it feels great. Like, it gives you that... That... It, it, like, there's a connection between the sound and the way that the controller feels and the way that the uh, enemies react to your hits and everything. It feels like it has weight. And I have played a lot of games before where you attack and the attacks feel like they have no weight. Like, they just go straight through the enemy and cause damage and whatnot. But you don't feel it. And I love how they, these feel. Like, just grabbing an enemy and ripping him in half is just a button press. But it just sounds and feels so great. And it's because the, the, the design in this and the audio is so good. And I, I, this is a game with voice acting. And it's a 2005-ish game, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I, I really didn't do much much research. This is just going off of what I played on the Vita, even though I'm showing you PS5 footage of the game being streamed. Um, the uh, Where the fuck was I going? Okay, I figured it out. I know where I'm going. So, I'm going back to the voice acting. So, T.C. Carson was the original God of War. He played God of War all the way up to Ascension, um, which is the last PS3 game, if I'm not mistaken. Um even though it was such a long time ago and voice acting was still technically feeling like it was in his teen years, it was very good. I, I feel like he did a very good job in Kratos, even though Kratos is just a rage-filled monster just screaming the entire time. I feel like TC Carson did a very good job doing that. Um, like, I hadn't put two and two together, and I didn't realize that Ares was was voiced by Steve Blum until I just looked it up now. I did hear it a little bit in some moments, but now that I, you know, see that it was him, like, it clicked, and holy shit, T.C. Carson playing off of uh, Blum's Ares was just fantastic. If they would have done, like, a whole thing with them... I'm pretty sure that it could have reached like levels of uh, Conroy and Mark Hamill as Joker and Batman. But Ares needed to get stabbed in the face, and he did. So let's talk about the gameplay. So the gameplay devolves into a bunch of things. It devolves into puzzle solving, it devolves into platforming, it devolves into combat. And uh, there's a few collectibles to increase your health and uh, to increase your magic. You do have magic to attack, you do have your weapons, you have an extra weapon that you can use, which is uh, the Blade of uh, Artemis, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you do collect uh, red orbs that do give you what would be maybe called experience points. These experience points, you, use, you spend them on your weapons, on your abilities to level them up. So they need a certain amount of experience points for you to be able to level them up. So, like, at first you might have to level up your Blades of Chaos, which is Kratos' main weapons with the chains, and it might take, you know, uh, maybe 5,000 orbs. But those 5,000 orbs would be, like, 16 bars of those red orbs that you've collected, which I I'm going to tell you... I don't think this game does the red orb thing as well as some of the other ones in the series do but being that it is the first one i, I can oversee it I, I can you know step over it I, I really don't mind like at the end i felt powerful enough um i didn't feel like i was lacking or anything even though all of my abilities were not fully completely uh, met with their maximum level um the, the combat itself it's so much fun like it's just maniacal swinging of the blades and hitting where whatever you hit and just killing it um you do have your square button which is your light attack it's fast it's powerful it's light um then you have your triangle which is your heavy attacks so you can combine square and triangle to do different combos um it's not as extensive as, as devil may cry is but it's mostly like a combination of light light heavy and ending the combo in a heavy now as you level up your weapons you can make 
uh, longer combos. For example, you can do a three hit combo with your heavy attacks and you do gain some extra abilities like pressing R1, uh, I mean L1 with square or triangle or circle to do a special ability. Um, there's also the circle, which is your grabs. Um, those usually don't yield in red orbs. Um, those maybe will give you blue or green orbs, depending on the enemies, because there are some enemies that when, when you take their health low enough, they will allow you to do an insta-kill. So once you hit circle, Kratos will maybe, you know, start climbing all over them and eventually kill them. But uh, those are with button presses. Like the Minotaur will have you just smash circle until Kratos slams his blades into his head and just kills it. And that one gives you uh, health orbs, which are green, and magic orbs, which are blue. Which I do appreciate because the game can get a little bit frustrating um, with the enemies. Sometimes the enemies do all attack you at the same time and then they block when you try to hit them and they don't stagger as often as you think they would now the blade of artemis is a second uh, bladed weapon melee weapon that you get um this weapon is good against certain enemies but it doesn't have the reach that the blades of chaos use i mean you sh you should play the way that you want i leveled it up all the way because i did like to use it for a few certain enemies um, but most of the time, I just kept switching back to the regular Blades of Chaos, and I did hate that the PSP version has the switch to the uh, Blade of Artemis uh, on the touchscreen. So my big fat ass fingers, which sometimes touch the touch, touch the touchscreen, touch the touchscreen, touch the touchscreen, and the blade would come out, um, and that would just completely throw off my combo, and that would frustrate me to no end because then enemies would start getting hits in. Anyways, I'm talking about what I like from the game. Um, the magic, I absolutely love the magic. My favorite one was um, the Poseidon's Fury, I believe. That's the one where Kratos like jumps up into the air and a ring of electricity starts going around him. And you can call lightning strikes down by pressing the circle button. That shit is so much fun. It's so good to clear out areas. It, it is peak God of War uh, gameplay. I wish they would have brought it for more games. They did a somewhat version of it in uh, The Ghost of Sparta. It's not as great, but it's still still fun. And they'd let you play with it a little bit in the beginning of 2. Um, you also have Medusa's head, which is basically just a head that you pull out. You turn enemies to stone, then you can break them. It does make for some fights uh, to be a whole hell of a lot more easier than they are. Um, there is... Uh, Zeus's lightning bolt, which is just exactly what I said. Zeus's lightning bolt, just throw lightning bolts. Um, they are your ranged weapon. Um, and then you have, I believe, uh, the Legion of Hades, which are ghosts that you can summon that will attack um, your enemies for you. That one has kind of a little bit of a wind up animation to it. So Kratos does like this whole little dance with his blades and whatnot. So he kind of channels his little Shakira on and throws the ghost at people and they do a lot of damage and they are great to have around but i just feel like it kind of kills the pacing of the combat which the combat is all about fast and frenetic and just bloody and gory and visceral um, and that just kind of slows it down because they just change they, they pretty much uh hit stun the enemies i um, mean you can get a few licks in and everything but it just kind of defeats the purpose the purpose of the game is to be the god of war to be the ultimate mortal to kill all of these hell spawn monsters so yeah gameplay fucking solid fantastic i i love it i absolutely love the game the the combat now what i don't like is the puzzle solving and the platforming i miss like the uh the platforming more than the puzzle solving let's start with the puzzle solving since i don't hate it as much but i still do hate it um, a large majority of the game takes place in Pandora's castle, Pandora's temple, whatever the fuck it's called, because honestly, I feel like so much of the game is wasted in that place. Um, when you have this amazing Greek world to explore, you just get shoved in the fucking desert on top of Cronus's back in this fucking castle or palace just to find uh, the fucking stupid box to pull it out. Uh, anyways... Um, so the puzzles are just so fucking huge and they're not hard. They're just go there, pull the lever, puzzle solved, or maybe spin these rocks around and make it match so that they fill up the whole fucking gap on that stupid fucking wall. So you can get a goddamn fucking pendant. Like they just feel like fucking padding. They don't feel 
good. They don't feel like they give you dopamine. It just feels like extra steps to open a fucking door. And I hate that shit. Particularly the big puzzle in the main hall of the temple is this giant statue that you have to turn around so that a beam of light can hit its chest in a diamond and open up so that it can become a fucking elevator and you do like the first part of this thing when you come into the the temple like three hours later you come back and do the second part and then three hours later you come back and finish the whole fucking puzzle and in between you're doing so many more goddamn puzzles in the fucking temple like jesus fucking christ shoot me in the goddamn face fuck i hated that shit they, I, I am glad that the series did keep the puzzles, but stepped away from the stupid fucking bullshit that these puzzles are. Like, And there's this one that fucking annoyed the shit out of me, because it was a puzzle on top of being a fucking platforming challenge. So you had to jump through these gaps, these platforms that were moving on ropes. And in between them, buzz saws were going through, so you had to jump in between them. And they were all going at different speeds, so it's not like you could just hop your way there no you have to like fucking time this shit once you got there there was a door that you had to open and there's three switches for the fucking door right there's one on the left side of it there's one in a hole in the right side of it and then the main switch it's all the way at the entrance of the fucking area right before those goddamn chainsaws so you drop a crane uh, a rock on a crane down the hole you lift it up, you put it in the other switch, you grab a statue from the other fucking side on the left, drag it over to the hole, throw it in the hole on the right side, and then put it on top of the switch. After doing that shit, you have to jump back blindly towards the fucking boss sauce, all the way to the entrance. So then you can stand on a fucking time switch and then jump over the fucking platforms to the other side and hope that you have enough time to run inside of the fucking goddamn building. Like, that shit drove me fucking insane. That, I had to do that shit so much. I died so many fucking times doing that. Like, that made me fucking miserable. I thought about quitting the game so many times, but I didn't. Because I was stubborn and I had nothing else to better, better to fucking do, so. Like, ah, man, like, if, if you don't get it like i hate the fucking puzzles they're so the, the the puzzles and the fucking platforming it's it feels like it's a product of its time like the time where people still hadn't figured out exactly how to do 3d puzzles they were starting to but it wasn't there and i know there's this big thing at the end of the game where you're in hell and people are like oh it's so difficult to climb up these towers with the fucking spikes that are spinning around that was easy. Like, I did that on my first fucking try. It's just a matter of watching the spikes and moving up and down. You don't even have to worry about the spikes, the, the, the towers turning you and pinning you up against the wall. Because that actually helps you go up the fucking towers. Like, that that was easy. That I didn't fall off once. That was great. But the fucking platforming before that was just so bad there were it's this little platforms that are like meat chunks on top of bone stilts that are sticking out from the ground right and you jump on them and they start caving in from under you so you have to do the fucking platforming right and you have to do it fast and if you miss a spot or anything in it like like a, a pixel or, or or anything like you will fall and you will fucking die and that shit drove me batshit because i had to do the first part of hell like four or five times now after that there are some beams that you have to balance yourself on and they spin and they have blades and whatnot i didn't find those that annoying but i can see how they can be very fucking annoying if one of them catches you off because they will hit you and Kratos just falls off. It's not like in the other games where if you fall off a beam, Kratos will hang on and you'll be able to pull yourself up. They didn't do that shit in this game. Oh, and another thing that I just remember that annoyed the fuck out of me. The wall climbing. You can climb walls, right? And you can jump up and you can jump sideways, which is great because it helps you move faster when you're climbing the wall. You can't jump downwards or slide down. You have to slowly crawl or climb your way down. And I, there was a part where I got turned around a little bit because, honestly, I wasn't paying too much attention. I was a little bit distracted. And I had to climb the same fucking wall, like, two times. 
and I was ready to put the game down and not come back to it. Like, there were so many times in this game where I just wanted to fucking give up, and I didn't. Um, so, like, like, the things that I hate about this game are just part of the gameplay. It's not even the story or the combat. It's like, not the combat's amazing, like, but the fucking platforming and the goddamn fucking puzzles, like, Jesus, fuck. Like, fix this game. Make it a remake this. Don't remake The Last of Us. Remake this and make it fucking better. God damn it. Ugh. All right. Let me try to calm down and talk a little bit about the story. So the story. Um, so basically, you're playing as Kratos. He is a pawn of the gods, for a better, for lack of a better word. Um, so Ares, the god of war, uh, saved him when Kratos begged him to be saved from being killed by a barbarian. And uh, Kratos had to spend the rest of his life in servitude to the god of war, Ares. Now, Ares tricked him into killing his family. And uh, I'm not sure if it was an oracle or a sage or whatever the fuck. Bound his family's ashes to his skin. So that's why he's white. That's why he's called the ghost of Sparta. Um, so Kratos was done that day with Ares. Like, no more. I'm going to fucking kill Ares. I don't want anything to do with him. So he makes a plea with the gods and the gods the gods tell him okay we will forgive you of your sins if you go kill Ares. Kratos is like all right fucking a two two birds with one stone two stones with one bird i would like to see somebody kill two stones with one bird that would be fun um anyways so he goes off to athens to put an end to Ares' rampage in in athena city and uh it it, he does it he he goes he figures out that he has to go to the temple of pandora get pandora's box open it and inside he will find the weapon to kill Ares. it goes into a whole other thing in the rest of the games which does not make any fucking sense with what came out of that box in this game but uh basically while he when he finds the box he starts pulling it out of the temple he's supposed to go through the desert get to athens and open the box there but he gets killed by Ares. Um, Kratos goes to hell. He escapes hell <laughs> because, of course, he does. He escapes fucking hell, and uh, he opens the box, fights Ares, and kills him. At the end, the gods forgave his sins, which yay! But they didn't take away the visions that he kept having of him murdering innocent people under the name of Ares, and uh, they give him the excuse of nobody can forget what you've done, but your sins are forgiven. And Kratos is like, well. That's it. I'm going to go kill myself. So he goes to the highest peak in all of Greek Greece and throws himself off. And the gods pick him up. And they're like, no, you can't kill yourself because you need to be the new god of war. And Kratos is like, you fucking trifling motherfuckers. I hate you all. And he goes to uh, fucking Olympus and lives there the rest of his days as the god of war. Um, or so it, 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 it was told um, in the cutscene. Uh, there were, uh, there are some inconsistencies with that ending because the series kept going. It kind of felt like uh, the creator, uh, David Jaffe, just wanted to end the game, game there. No series, no nothing, just end the game. That's the end of Kratos' story. Um, but they continued, so it, it, it is a little bit jarring if you play this and then continue playing the series because it's weird because they show like World War II soldiers and like um, Desert Storm soldiers in it. So it's, it's strange. Um, so, how can you play this game? I played this game on the Vita. I'm recording the footage on the PlayStation 5 by streaming the PS3 version of the game. Which, it surprisingly runs very well. Like, I, I, I am surprised that it runs as well as it does compared to all the other games that I've tried to stream. Like, The Force Unleashed just runs like complete fucking dog shit. But it's a good way to play it. If you have a fast internet connection and you do connect your, your Ethernet cable straight into your PS5, like, it will run pretty well. Um, so that is a way to play it right now. Um, you do have to, unfortunately, subscribe to one of the higher tiers. So the $60 tier is not going to get you access to this game, but the higher ones will. Um, so that's that's up to you if you want to play this game or not. If you have a Vita, just buy it off the, sh the store, uh, the online store, which is what I did. Or try to get a physical copy if you can, but that'll run you a pretty penny. Um, uh, just a couple more things. Um, my score for the game. Um, it's a 7 out of 10. Um, like I said, I, I like the story. I love the combat. Um, I, I just hate the platforming and the puzzles. They just feel like 
padding. They feel like wastes of time. They don't feel like they add anything to the story or to... I mean, they don't they don't feel like they add anything important to the game, like, solve this puzzle, and then a little bit later on, you find a dead fucking Spartan, and you're like, how the fuck did you get here if this puzzle had to be solved first? It, it's just fucking frustrating. 7 out of 10. It's a decent game. I mean, and if you like puzzles and platform, you can fucking get over it. So yeah, that that's what I think about God of War. Um, I mean, I, I didn't have a terrible time because I, I obviously did finish it. And it is a good game, and it, it's a fucking classic. Like, if, if you're a gamer at some point, well, if you're a gamer my age at some point, you've probably fucking played a God of War game, which is, yeah, you, you've seen some shit. Anyways, it, it's fun. Play it. Um, don't play it. If you don't mind the puzzles or the platforming, I mean, you'll have a great time at least just with the combat, even though it feels a little bit dated and other games in the series have done it better. But it's still a good time. Um, so th this is my idea. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, this is what I plan on doing going forward. Um, I am going to invest in a better video editing system and uh, obviously better recording because, I mean... This camera looks incredible. I can see the pores in my fucking face, but when I have to change the format of the video, it loses a ton of fucking quality, which drives me up the fucking wall. I look cloudy as shit. Um, and, I, and I'm going to get better lighting. Right now I have like this fucking lamp and that lamp over there, and they're just fucking orange, white, yellow shit um, beaming into my face. So, uh, yeah, just if you have any ideas, if you have any thoughts or anything, just drop them below um let me know and uh i'll see you guys hopefully pretty s soon i think yeah yeah all right bye everyone